Today, LPS Fragging Fun 101. My top 12 fragging tools and tips for fragging LPS corals. So here's what you'll see from start to finish, our suggested top tools for the job, what to cut and how, and a couple safety tips. Which brings me to tip number one, and that's safety first. Best practice to wear eye protection and gloves. I also wanna mention that your gloves should fit your hands. Cause gluing small corals, especially LPS frags, is a huge pain with sloppy loose gloves. Number two, prep work and basic tool check. Keep your work area organized and your tools laid out. Also, frag in bright lighting so you can see what you're doing in your cutting, which is especially important for LPS, which you're most likely gonna be using a frag saw to cut. Number three, uniform. Make sure not to wear your Sunday best and choose clothes that you can get glue all over. And if you have longer hair, make sure to pull it up or pull it back because there's no magic trick to getting glue out of your clothes. And the only way you're getting it out of your hair is with a scissors. Number four, basic tools of the trade. Making sure to keep them for fragging only. There are several tools that you can use when fragging LPS, but you'd be most successful if you use a frag saw, like the Griffin Aqua Saw, which is specifically designed for fragging corals. A bone cutter, making sure to pick a size that you're comfortable with handling. Also, I recommend a curved blade bone cutter and a forceps for grabbing and holding corals. Glue and Instaset for securing your corals once you're done fragging them. Frag plugs or rubble in assorted sizes. Personally, I like to get creative and have options. And towels, make sure you have one for your floor and one for your hands. Number five, make sure to rinse all your tools in RO when you're done. Your tools will rust, but they will rust way faster if they're not cleaned after each use. Number six, natural breaks and shapes. Making sure to keep in mind where you cut can actually aid in faster healing and a more natural growth pattern. Number seven, what to frag and what not to. You can cut favias, lobos, acans, ganis, and euphilia, like torches, hammers, and also chalices. Don't cut elegances, bubbles, scolies, welsos or trackies, acanthophilias, or cynorinas. Number eight, cutting tools and tips, starting with favias and chalices. I highly recommend using a saw for cleaner and more precise cuts, but if you are using a bone cutter, make sure to have larger frags and be careful not to crush the delicate skeleton, keeping in mind that each frag needs to have an eye. For lobos and acans, and with all LPS, each one needs to have a mouth or an eye. But for lobos, don't cut through polyps or tissue. For acans, you can cut through the tissue, but just make sure that they do have a mouth. And for euphilias and ganis, which are some of my personal favorites, use a saw for best results. But you can also use a curved blade coral cutter or a bone cutter, just being careful not to crush the skeletal base. And for ganis, make sure to follow the polyp line for faster healing and more success. Number nine, dipping before sticking. When you're cutting through tissue, dip in iodine. I recommend Lugol's before sticking to a plug. It promotes healing and generally more success and faster recovery of your corals. Also, if you're fragging from a mother colony, I recommend dipping that in iodine as well. Number 10, pick what sticks. I recommend using the BRS Extra Thick Gel and Instaset. And when you're gluing, remember that less is best and keep it off the tissue. Also, have an extra bottle of glue handy in case you need it. Number 11, have lots of options plugs, plates, or pieces of rubble. It depends on the growth pattern of the corals, whether you're growing it out, putting it back in your display, or removing to refrag. Generally though, plugs are for selling and organizing, discs and plates are for propagation, and rubble's for display. For chalices and favias, rubble or plates. For lobos and acans, plates and rubble. And for ganis and euphilias, rubble's for a garden, and frag plugs for propagation. Number 12, promote healing. Place your newly fragged corals in higher flow areas. And I also recommend maybe using a little bit of carbon if you're fragging large colonies and also do a water change. Also, place them in areas with the same lighting and water parameters. If you're fragging to share, you need to make room, or you're just looking to make a few extra dollars to support your reefing addiction, click the link and check out all of our fragging supplies now.